Hello, my name is Peter West, and today I'm going to talk about the Speed Fusion engine from Peplink. Um, this is the Speed Fusion engine LTEA. Um, it's a fanless design with a nice heat sink here, super uh, powerful as well. So this is going to have dual SIM card support. So you're going to have a cellular one and cellular two, but you don't have the redundant SIM cards like you would like in a transit duo. It then has MMCX connectors, and these are kind of tricky. So I have an MMCX to SMA adapter here. And so what you do is the MMCX adapter plugs into the MMCX port on the, on the router. It has threads, and then maybe that's for a bigger one that screws on to tighten in. But the idea, don't be tricked by, if you buy the MMCX to SMA, they both look like they would not connect to each other. It just slides in and locks in. Um, so I have my my antenna for the demo today set up and already wired with four of the MMCX adapters. I just went on Amazon and got MMCX to SMA and got that for you. The next thing is the SIM cards are 3FF or they are the micro. So the standard Peplink routers are standard SIM cards or 2FF. The Speed Fusion engine uses the 3FF or the micro adapter. So it's good to know that that's what you want to use here. So you have the 4FF nanos, the 3FF micros, and then the 2FF standards. So this router uses the uh, micro SIM and it just slides right in there. Ooh. There we go, click. So the other thing is the router only comes with a, a little black box like this, a little connector for the power. Um, that's a little misleading because how do you power it, right? Um, so I grabbed a 12 volt, uh, just a 12 volt adapter, split the cable, plugged it in, and that's gonna give me my, my power for the router. Um, so again, this is designed for IoT. So if you're buying this kit uh, to play around with or to test, you wanna make sure that, that you get the power, uh, power adapter with it. Um, or understand that you're going to be plugging 12 volt power into it. Um, the other thing is funny is you have an Ethernet port here, and this is a LAN or WAN port. And you might ask yourself, if it has no Wi-Fi and it only has one Ethernet port, how would I have a WAN port and use it? Because it only has one port, right? So that that's kind of misleading. Um, this USB port it can act as a LAN port. So you can actually USB this to a device. Um, so once again, this, this is designed to be an IoT application. So plugging this into like a like a Raspberry Pi or something to the USB port or to a device maybe that doesn't have Ethernet. Um, and so the USB allows you to do USB LAN and then you can have the Ethernet WAN if you want to or an Ethernet LAN uh, if you want to. So kind of a neat little uh, segue there uh, on, on the design aspects. Uh, it's really small and easy. Um, it, to, to set up and use. So I've got my 12 volt power. Um, I can go ahead and plug this in and turn it on. And you'll see kind of like uh, it, it, the little red light inside is booting up. And then I'm just gonna snap on my, my cables here. Once again, these are those MMCX connectors and I just bought MMCX to SMA. And so now the router is set up with um, the MMCX. Now, obviously, this antenna is massive. Um, so, but uh, you can use smaller antennas or integrated antennas or, you know, MMCX antennas or however you want to do that. And then let's take a look at the UI. So while we're waiting for it to load, this is the data sheet. Um, so you can see that it has one fast Ethernet uh, WAN interface. Um, it has one or two embedded LTE modems. Your LAN is gonna be one fast ethernet, uh, LAN ethernet cable or one USB port. It has 100 megs of routing throughput, supports up to 60 devices. The LTEA, which is what I have, is um, LTEA CAT6, supports up to 300 by 50 megs of throughput. Um, I have the four MMCX antenna connectors and then the GPS. My power input is the terminal block, 12 to 24 volt. Once again, it does not come with a power cable. It's expecting, you know, what battery or some sort of 12 volt interface. Power consumption is only 15 watts max, which is phenomenal. It's only 2.95 by 3.25 by 1.65 inches. Uh, it weighs 0.77 pounds and can operate negative 40 to 
149 uh, degrees Fahrenheit with uh, 15 to 15 to 95% non-condensing uh, humidity. Um, I'm running the Speed Fusion Engine LTEAWET for my testing here. That's a category six with dual modems. Um, so that, that's what we're kind of uh, running in the environment. Okay, so the router is online. I'm uh, logged into the device via in control right now. And so you'll see that I've got my two cellular connected, uh, Verizon and Google Fire, my test networks that I'm using. Um, you can also see that this, this little guy is using the Speed Fusion Cloud. So I went ahead and loaded the new 8.1 firmware and I went to the Speed Fusion Cloud. I activated my Sp Speed Fusion Cloud license. I went to choose cloud location and I just set it to automatic uh, for right now, just so I could play around with it. So it's just, I just did automatic, but I can change that to, you know, it, uh, all the different regions, um, but I kind of like that it's um, automatic. Then uh, under the network settings, um, we have our LAN management, just like you would in a normal uh, Peplink router. I've got my port settings, um, just like I would. So here's my, my LAN port, my WAN port. Um, I can set my, yeah, my speed and enable those ports. Um, and then in my WAN, um, you've got your WAN management just like you do on the dashboard so I can see what, what my settings are there. Under advanced, I have my Speed Fusion uh, options. Because I'm connected to the Speed Fusion Cloud, I can actually send all traffic directly to the Speed Fusion Cloud right through uh, this, uh, this send all traffic to option. Or I can go to my outbound policies and define how the internet is being used, whether specific traffic is util utilizing Speed Fusion Cloud or uh, regular internet connections or cellular connections, et cetera. Um, you have your port forwarding options, NAT mapping, QoS, application controls. I have my full firewall functionality, just like you would norm have in a normal router. So I've got my outbound, inbound, internal firewall options, my intr uh, intrusion detection and DOS prevention capabilities, OSP and BGP. I even have remote user access. Um, you know, it's a small IoT device. I don't know how fast that would be, but we do have our um, L2TP VPN and Open Open VPN options available to us. Um, and then we have our standard um, miscellaneous settings, uh, certificate management, service forwarding, pass through, that kind of stuff that you would have in um, all of our Peplink routers. The remote SIM management is a, a kind of a neat feature because right now the router does not have; it only has one SIM per modem. But if we enable um, the remote SIM management and then use a SIM injector, we could actually add eight additional SIM cards to this router using the SIM injector. So we could um, use a SIM injector and put more routers. And I actually have a SIM injector here. Let me see if I can pull that up and show you. Um, so here's my SIM injector. Um, I've got some SIM cards in here. I was using it to test my HD1 domes. So I could connect this to the LAN of the uh, Speed Fusion engine, and that obviously would give me three additional LAN ports uh, with PoE support for like powering like an AP or something like that. Um, so if I use a Speed Fusion engine, a uh, Speed Fusion engine with the SIM injector, I would actually have a three-port PoE switch for a uh, camera or um, an AP or any other type of device. The the Speed Fusion uh, the SIM injector does support 12 volt. Now, if you did that, you won't have the PoE, but you could uh, do the 56 volt and get it PoE capable. So just something that you could upgrade to if you wanted to. So overall, um, the router seems to be uh, very intuitive, same user interface that you would get from the Peplink infrastructure and ecosystem that you're standardly used to having. It is fully managed and in control and offers great service and functionality. I find the Speed Union Engine kind of a unique product with the connectors, the SIM cards changes. Um, I've had a couple of people ask about the, the Speed Fusion Engine and why you would use it. Um, it. This would be phenomenal, once again, for IoT applications or providing Ethernet, to, uh, Ethernet cellular uh, to um, a single device or a small group of devices that you might want, um, or just portability and size. So once again, um, this is a high temperature range device POE or um, 12 volt DC powered. So it has a much more wide range of deployment capability 
than um, our larger standard routers. So I would love to see some creative options for this. So we're gonna turn this one into a small little speed fusion case um, and try to hook it up to my laptop. So the idea would be just to have a little tiny speed fusion device. I will not have a, a big antenna, I'll have a small antenna, but um, you can see that uh, you can have fun with it. So anyways, I hope this is useful and helps you with the speed fusion engine, gives a little bit more clarity on how to set it up and configure it. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.